I'm Alan Lido for 91.3 WUKY, Lexington's NPR news station, where it is time once again for our award-winning history series, Saving Stories, with Dr. Doug Boyd from the Louis B. Nunn Center for Oral History in the UK Libraries. It's a segment where we feature interviews from the collection. Good day to you, Doug. It's good to be here. Doug, the Kentucky General Assembly has just passed a law allowing for medical marijuana. And today we're hearing from someone who has long been a proponent of marijuana in Kentucky, and that would be Gatewood Galbraith. Louis Gatewood Galbraith was born in Carlisle, Kentucky. He graduated from the University of Kentucky in 1974. He received his law degree from UK just three years later. He was a successful attorney. He was an activist. He was an author. And he was a political candidate. You look up the dictionary under perennial candidate, and his picture is there. He ran for Kentucky Ag Commissioner in 1983. In 2003, he ran for Attorney General. He ran for Congress twice in 2000 and 2002. And between 1991 and 2011, he ran for governor five times. But looking back on his career, Gatewood Galbraith is probably best known for his passionate advocacy for the legalization of marijuana. In this first clip, he lays out his case. Well, I'm not afraid of its increased use as a recreational intoxicant. First of all, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a significant increase. Uh, we have some uh, models to uh, follow and take a look at the Amsterdam model. In Amsterdam, they decided that the cost of uh, prohibition was too large, and they changed the laws on everything in Amsterdam. Marijuana and hashish are accessible. Hard drugs are accessible. They do not uh, prohibit it or put pe- imprison people for it. Uh, marijuana use rose only a little bit after it became accessible and leveled off. Uh, there's no uh, outright explosion of use in it. Hard drug use actually went down. Uh, when marijuana becomes accessible, hard drug use goes down. Marijuana becomes inaccessible, hard drug use goes up, and there are several factors for that. Prohibiting it has not made it inaccessible. It has simply made it uh, dealing with it on a black market level. As far as uh, increased use goes, you've got to realize that marijuana is the very best medicine on this earth. Marijuana is the number one medicine for the number one killer on this planet, which is stress. Uh, right now, the pharmaceutical companies who own a monopoly on medicines in this country are having Valium prescribed for stress. They're having these pharmaceutical and laboratory uh, pharmaceuticals uh, given out to the public on almost a random basis. Ninety percent of the emergency room reporting for drug overdoses had to do with prescription medicine. Aspirin kills 500 to 1,000 people a year in the state in the country because of overdose. Marijuana has never caused one overdose ever in the entire history of mankind. So I'm not afraid of an increased use of marijuana. I don't like to see it abused. I'm not condoning its use. My mother wouldn't take an aspirin on her deathbed if she thought it would give her another year to live. She just does not do medicines, does not do drugs. That is her choice. I think that the right of choice in this country is the most basic right of all, And I think people can choose whether or not to do a great deal of marijuana or a very little bit of marijuana. I know one thing for certain. When they wake up the next day, they're going to be ready to go to work. They're not going to be hungover. They're not going to be mad. and They're not going to um, have grown any warts on their nose over the use of it. And from this 1990 oral history interview, the interviewer asks Gatewood Galbraith about his dreams for Kentucky. Kentucky ranks 48th, 49th, and 50th in all the standard living indexes right now. I want Kentucky to achieve a pride and dignity and expectations that we're going to be first and number one in some positive things in this state. I want people who live in this state to feel proud that they're here, to feel that they enjoy as many or more freedoms than any other political jurisdiction in the world, whether it's the United States or any other country. I want them not only to be proud of our clean environment, our clean air and clean water, but to feel like they have an obligation to maintain it for future generations. I want the children of the state of Kentucky not to get an adequate education, but a superior education. Galbraith passed away in 2012. The Nunn Center has over 80 interviews on the life and legacy of Gatewood Galbraith. And in November of this year, a book by Matthew Strandmark will be published from those interviews titled Gatewood, Kentucky's Uncommon Man. It's being published by the University Press of Kentucky. Gatewood Galbraith was sincerely optimistic that he would win the political races that he ran for. I think if you were running today, the outcome would be different. Important to point out that SB 47, which was passed by the General Assembly, is only about medicinal marijuana, a monumental vote. I think more people should be talking about the influence of Gateway Galbraith's decades-long campaign on this issue. He really was the person who planted the seeds for this legislation. Hmm. I see what you did there. Doug Boyd from the Louis B. Nunn Center for Oral History in the U.K. Libraries has been our guest again on Saving Stories. Have a good one. Thanks for having me.